There are essentially two ways to measure inflation, and two major ways to measure inflation. The first one is one you actually already know a little bit about, so let's just talk about that one first. And that's the GDP deflator. If you remember from our previous discussion of the GDP, that the GDP deflator equaled the nominal GDP over the real GDP for any given year. Times 100. Because essentially, what differentiates nominal and real is that nominal has both price and quantity changing. <coughs> and that real only has quantity changing. Which would mean then that if you took a ratio of the two, what you'd be able to see is just the price changing by looking at this GDP deflator number. So let's give an example here. Let's say that the nominal GDP in 2000, I'm just going to keep the numbers simple here, is 1000. That the real GDP in 2000 equals, um, let's say, 980. Then 1000 over 980 times 100, right, is going to give me. Um, <clears throat> 102.04. Okay, so that's my GDP deflator number. Now let's say that I do <coughs> nominal GDP in 2010 is equal to $2,200, and that real GDP in 2010 is equal to $2,100. Now the way that, again, we're calculating the real GDP is by using a base year price. And if you need some review about how to calculate the real GDP, um, go back uh, two chapters. Um, that would be going back at here. Go back to chapter six um, on the agenda, it's item number seven. <coughs> so our GDP deflator would then equal 2200 over 2100 times 100. And give me 104.76. Now, I'm going to do the percentage change in the GDP deflators. 104.76 minus 102.04 over 102.04 times 100. So what I'm doing here is I'm just estimating the percentage change here, and I get 2.67% basically. So that would be my estimate then of how much prices had overall changed in the economy. The percentage change in GDP deflator gives me a broad measure of the overall change in prices. Now this is just one of the methods of solving for um, the price changes. The other way of doing it would be with the CPI. So when you see CPI, that stands for Consumer Price Index. or 
CPI. And here we're talking about a fixed basket of goods that can consumers buy. <laughs> and essentially what we say here when we say a fixed basket, we'd be saying like every month they buy uh, 20 gallons of gasoline, that they buy 5 gallons of milk, that they buy, um, you know, 6 loaves of bread, um, and all the other things that consumers buy every month, right? So this would be a very long list. Now, it's a fixed basket, meaning that the quantities will always stay the same. It's just that we allow their price to be to change over time. So if I wanted to calculate um, how things were changing, right? Let's just let's call it G M and B: gasoline, milk, and bread. So the quantity will always be 25 and 6. Except now we're seeing that the price in 2016 is let's say 250. Let's say that the milk price is five dollars and that the bread choice is two dollars. And in 2017, let's say that it's three dollars, six dollars, and three dollars. Just trying to pick some easy numbers here. What you then need to do is you need to calculate the price of the basket in 2016. You need to calculate the price of the basket in 2017. And we need to also know the price of the basket in the base year. And what you have as a base year, uh, that's kind of up to either me telling you what the base year is, or it's um, something that um, if you were a researcher or someone talking about things that you could choose as well. <coughs> so let's just add one more out here then. So obviously I'm already talking about the future. Well, let's presume that this is the year 2019 instead. So I'm going to pick my base year. as 2016. So then I'm going to change this. 2017, 2018, and 2016. So I need to calculate the, basically the total expenditures in 2016, which is going to equal here 20 times 2.5 plus 5 times 5 plus 6 times 2. Okay, so that's how much my basket cost completely in 2016. In 2017, I'm looking at 20 times 3 plus 5 times 6 plus 6 times 4. I'm sorry, uh, I'm 3, sorry. 60 plus 30 plus 18. So that's all equal to um, 108. And then in 2018, we're looking at um, 20 times 4 plus 5 times 7 plus 6 times 4, which would 
mean I'd have 80 plus 35 plus 24, which is equal to 139. So now, as you see here from what I circled, you can see that the price of the basket of goods has increased over time. So now what we need here is the CPI formula. That the CPI, the Consumer Price Index number, what we need to do is calculate the index numbers. And that's going to equal my total expenditures My total expenditures times my spending in a base year. Sorry, I'm just going to change my pen here, which is um, out of ink. So one second here. I'm going to divide it by my total expenditures in the base year. So that would mean that my CPI in 2016 is going to have the same number in the numerator and denominator. In this case, um, I'm going to have 87 over 87, and then we multiply this by 100, and that gets us 100. Sorry, I, I tried to fit in here times 100. Um, <clears throat> times 100. Sorry, I, I couldn't fit into times 100, so we're just adding times 100. Um, the base year CPI number is always 100. Now, my CPI number in 2017 is going to equal 108 over 87, again, times 100. And that equals 124. My CPI number in 2018 is equal to 139 over 87 times 100, and that gets me 100 and uh, basically 160 if you do do some rounding. So now with these CPI numbers, inflation then equals the percentage change in my CPI numbers. So if we look at 2016 to 2018, then I would have 160 minus 100 over 100 times 100 equaling 60% change between 2016 and 2018. It would look like I had planned this, but it actually just worked out to be that convenient. Um, but that's what the CPI numbers then tell us, is they tell us a great deal about um, how the overall basket of goods that a consumer buys every month, how those things change in price over time. So what you're seeing in this number four in this lecture here is two possible ways then that we can calculate prices changing in the economy. One, looking at all the things bought in the entire economy, that's our GDP deflator, or we could look at things that particular you know, consumers buy in an economy, and that would be with our CPI.